Hello. Hi, Gary E. Sweeney, coalition.com. Um, I'm here with Ed from the Brink team. So just introduce yourself um, and let the people know what your role is in the game. Hi, hey, I'm Ed Stern, I'm the lead writer at Splashdown, and working on Brink, which is we're showing off here at uh, the London game, Eurogamer Expo thing. So it's been a long day. My brain not yeah, works so good. I know how it is. But okay, so um, just tell us a little bit about the build of the game that you have here today. Okay, so uh, Brink's coming out the first quarter of next year. It's a first-person shooter for to be able in London. Um, this is a demo. Well, we're actually demonstrating it, doing it on PC with an Xbox 360 control. The yeah. previous version we were showing off at like uh, E3 and PAX and Gamescom we've been on PS3. Because uh, it's much better if we set it up as a piece of hardcore PC first-person shooter multiplayer. So we really need to demonstrate, look, we can do this on console. So you know, it's quite a big deal for us to show, look, we are showing this off on the PlayStation 3, and on the PlayStation 3 controller. This one we're doing on PC builds instead. Um, it's a slight, I mean, it's always kind of early because you want to show people absolutely up to date stuff. Yeah. But it takes so long to get the demo build of the game together, you've actually got to start working on the game to do it and you really need to get the game finished. So um, it's a slightly old build, it's certainly improved on stuff we've showed off in the past. Uh, it's working okay, I mean, clearly people are playing it, so we can't see out the window, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I mean, people are, are really getting into it and have a lot of very positive feedback about it. Um, it's, it's kind of early, sometimes they go, this thing isn't quite clear. It's like, no, we fixed that a month ago, it just didn't get into this build for this particular demo. Okay. I, I noticed it was the PC build, like, even though um, people was playing with their Xbox 360 yeah. controller. It just looks so beautiful that I knew it, it has to be PC. But um, in, your, like, in your honest opinion, yeah. then, like, how much of a distance do you think the PC graphics are between the console? Oh, no, well, I mean, we were insisting, we knew when we started making green. Had to be, we had to do all the versions ourselves. So it's the same engine, it's the same assets, whether we're playing on 360 or PS3 or PC. And it's got to work perfectly well. We don't want it to be like, well, you know, sometimes you can say with the game, it's, oh, well, it's clearly been made for this platform, but I'm playing on this other platform and it doesn't quite work. So you don't think any platform has a slight edge at all? No, it's absolutely, no, the goal for it is that it's absolutely the same game, it's totally consistent. Now that said, if you've got a really nice brand new PC with a really expensive graphics card and loads of memory, Clearly, it's going to be a nice looking image. We're, we're not going to um, cut off the lids so that you know it won't look as nice. To make sure it doesn't look nicer than a locked box console. But they're all looking really tight. I mean, people, you could play the three of them side by side, and you would not. I don't think necessarily be able to tell. I'm sorry. Which which version is which? Okay, so um, just tell us like a little bit about the game. What what's different about this game as one of the first person shooters? Um, I've had the chance to see it a couple of times. some ways researching again, well, that, that's what that looks like. Okay, we'll stick that in the game, that'd be brilliant. Um, so what happens is the seas start to rise, they take it away from the coast where they're kind of in the middle of the ocean, they get hit by the, the tens of thousands of refugees turn up, fleeing the chaos gun, and suddenly no more refugees are gone. They're totally cut off. And then by the time we get to the game, it's a big twenty forty five, they haven't heard from the outside world. No one knows what's going on. Some people will then leave to try and find what's going on. Some people say, well, we've got to stay. 
today we're going to see people with the same bottom doors. The, there's a problem with a lot of game sets. It's like you think, well, hang on, why are they fighting? Or if they are going to fight, why do you want them to just leave? Yeah, exactly. A lot of people think um, on first person shooters, like, a lot of them don't even take the story into account, they just go into the shooter. A lot of the time it's optional. And to be fair, you shouldn't have to be into the story to enjoy it. I mean, personally, I love, have you been a buyer show? Yeah. I love, a buyer show one I love, I played those games as slowly as possible. Because I knew they really put the work into creating the world. A really rich world, a really interesting characters, and I really wanted to, and also, the environment itself was telling the story. You didn't get any, any, a non-player character saying, stop, stop, you, I know you've paid, paid for this game, stop playing it, because I've got to tell you how things were 20 years ago. It's ridiculous. It's much better if all of that is just what you just look around and go, oh, wow, this is what this place was meant to be. Oh, wow, that wasn't part of that plan. That's not bad. So, yeah, at the beginning of the, the, the game, you choose whether you want to play the security or the resistance. And it's not like good versus evil. It's not like hero cops and evil terrorists or heroic freedom fighters and evil stormtroopers. Because that's just, like, that doesn't go anywhere. I mean, the end of the like, ancient Greek team is about drama. The choice between good and evil is good. There's no choice. Well, of course we can yeah. do that. The choice between good and good is more interesting. So, so you've got the two teams. Let's say, like the macro show like the container system. The security come in, they've got to come to this place. It's, it's like a slum made out of all shipping containers. It's all rusting, it's boarding to the sea. And they've been given intelligence that there is a, a viral weapon, a dirty bomb, they've got to go, you know, get a soft one, get out of it. The resistance get told that they're trying to steal our backs. Are you going to believe, like, why, why on earth will they say, yes, we're, we're, we're evil, we're making a dirty bomb, we've got to stop them stealing our, you know, our, our terror weapon. Right That's not how the world works. No one thinks they're a bad person. Exactly. So, we wanted to have two sides of the story. So, like, when you play through one campaign, you can go, wow, I wonder, I wonder what the other side, the other version of the base was. And maybe you'll get to see something. Oh, wait, they didn't tell me that. Oh, okay. That's like, I just want to tell you, you weren't a true no, no, because I played so many first person shooters. Like, I love people to learn a lot of Halo, a lot of modern warfare. Like, it's just, it's just it's good and evil. You just grab a gun, what? shoot Some the enemy, and that's it. Sometimes I love games like Ring, sorry, to cut you off. I love games like Ring, and you know, like you mentioned, Bioshock. It gives you something to think about while you play as well. Well, there's some people, I mean, it depends. Sometimes you've got to make it clear for people. There's lots of people on games to store that. Maybe they're like, I mean, you and it, like, we both like, we like, kind of like, wow, I wonder what's really going on. Some people just find that confusing. It's like, no, show me the bad guy, show me the alien guy. I'm the space marine, he's alien. That is a real, everyone can get that story. Uh, but it's actually quite hard to tell a more complex story. But sometimes you just get lots of it's not very interesting at all. And that's the lead driver. Um, like, what challenges did you face when presenting the story? Oh man, it's, 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 it's tough because you've got very little time to tell a story. Like you've got, you know, the kind of commander of the faction, so you've got the leader of security, you've got the uh, uh, there's the leader of the resistance, you've got Joe Shane, and they're, they're telling you, oh, they're trying to do this, and we've got to go do that. And then you can see it cinematic. You see these three characters, you get three security guys, you get three distance guys. And you see them kind of discussing it, and they don't quite agree with it. It's like, listen, it's all like, you do what? Oh, I'm not so sure about that. So, you, but it's, and this, like any cinematic, like any good cinematic, you've got to be able to skip it. And I know a lot of players can do that, but also, like, no, I wrote this, even I've got to play through the hundredth time. Right. Sorry, can we just let it go through? Go on, go on, go on, sir. Sorry about that, guys. It's crazy to hear this. It's, it's, like, it's all going on. It's all going on. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, if you're interested in the story, there's stuff in there. Uh, but you've got very little time to tell. You've just got to make sure that it's emotionally involved. If it's just a lecture, it's boring. If someone says, this is important and you need to care about it, it's like, well, why? Like, that, that's never going to If you just tell someone it's important, that doesn't do it. If you see, if you're, if you're involved in a character and you see the horrible situation it puts them in, and you feel that time, I don't know what I do in that situation. That means that you're kind of immersed, not just in the gameplay, but also in the story. So hopefully that's what we do. So, like, do you try and bring the story out uh, away from just cutscenes as well? So while you're playing, do you um, do a lot of dialogue within the characters? And not so much. The combat tends to be about the combat. I, I think it's confusing. Because we, like, if it's single, then you can have it. You pace it by, like, oh, this guy says something at this point. But because it's multiplayer, anything can happen at any point. Yeah. We can't make it kind of go, OK, here was an exciting bit. Now we're going to calm it down. Well, I mean, games like Halo are fantastic at going, OK, it's kind of calm. Oh, the tension's gone up a bit. Oh, it's gone up. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to lose. 
and then they can bring attention back down again. For us, we can't predict when that's going to happen because maybe a team makes progress and the objective, you know, oh, it's a new objective, we've got to get to there, so everything kind of resets. Or maybe they get stuck at that first objective for a while. We can't use that kind of storytelling because we can't predict how it's going to go. But it's the unpredictability of multiplayer that makes it so really quiet. Like our very first game was a PC only game called um, Wolfenstein Angry Terror. Like seven years old. It's still in the top ten, sometimes almost yeah. the top five most played on the game. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's a free download, do check it out. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> uh, so, in the last couple of seven years, we've had over a half a billion games, and no two of them have been so. Now, I've, there are some wonderful games that I've loved a lot, but I don't really want to play for it. Because if I turn the corner, the same guy is going to have the same little wrench up, the same grenade every single time. So if I beat him once, and I, why don't I go back and do that again, maybe see if I can do it just with headshots and not really wasting any ammunition. The whole point about having a multiplayer, so it's always team versus team, so that any player can be a, uh, uh, an AI player or a human, a human player, no difference at all. So it can, it, it's an instant drop in, drop out. A single player could be can't be multiplayer, it's totally unpredictable. It's still fun, hopefully, you know, it's, still, it's not unpredictable in the cool way. But it means that no two games are ever going to play out the same way. And even if you say, oh, I've played that now. Oh, wait, I only played it from a security point of view. I didn't play it from resistance. Let's give that a go. Oh, wait, I only played it for soldier. Let's try playing it as medic. Oh, wait, that's a totally different. Oh, I've got this new weapon. Let's try that. There's always a reason to go back to the tactics of the game, so it's worth it. Okay, um, do you have any like expansions or DLC plans? We just trying to finish the game right oh, now. No. Um, so, to finish off, it's the magic question. Yeah. When can the people get their hands in the game? I'll get them releasing the first version of 2000. We're finishing it as fast as we can, but we've got to get it. We, are, we want people to be playing this game for a long time to come. We want to get it right. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You've been great, man. Oh, I just, I just stood here and listened, and I enjoyed it. I, mean, I felt like he's interviewing me for something. <laughs> so, what makes you think you can shoot? Excuse us for a moment. Pleasure. Absolutely. Thanks.